All right, cool. What are we doing this time? Well, Gary, you'll notice that we are at a night at the museum. Oh, hey! That's right. Baby, don't hurt me <laughs> no more. Yeah, it is less uh, less lively than <laughs> Mr. Stiller would have you believe. Or, okay. I guess, half of the state wrote that? Yeah. yeah. Thomas Lennon and Ben Garrett. Yeah. Um, who make their money, like, writing... <laughs> Like those kind of comedies, and yeah. they wrote a book about it. That's apparently really frank about like, let's write some like serviceable but not particularly inspired comedies as a living. And here's how you do it. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to read that book because those guys are funny. Yeah, but um, no. Uh, so I I got some tips from my uh fr from my deep web uh compatriots, a um, mm. couple of people I met through the Inf Infowars Con. That uh, there is a secret section here about the about the uh, kind of evolutionary paths and wars that we never, that we, that we don't really. Oh, secret history. Yeah. Secret histories. And I so, love secret histories. And so Gary, um, I'm going yeah. to have you take this crowbar because I can't have okay. my fingerprints on this. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a two striker. Uh, mm -hmm. And just pop, pop this door open to what uh, this blue, this blueprint that I bought for Bitcoins says is the secret history room. Okay. Clang, 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 clang. I only know how to use a crowbar from Half Life. <laughs> bang, bong, well, we, we bing, can... bong, bang, blame, bang, 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 <laughs> bang, bang, blame. <laughs> oh no, the door just kind of like disappeared. It didn't want to hear that okay. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go through. All right, and, and let's train my flashlight here. Oh, it's very small. Okay. It's like a like a closet. Oh yeah, I mean it's blueprints. It's not <clears throat> you know it's not a big thing. Right. Um, it's just an NES cartridge. Dino Wars attack on Spondylus? Cole. <sighs> my, my grandfather died in the attack on Spondylus. If the punchline for this is a, it involves a guard tower, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> there's no, there's no punchline. <laughs> it was just a very solemn and respectful funeral. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the, uh, the priest came up and gave the traditional Spondylus <laughs> funeral, right? Oh yeah. And then I make a Godzilla noise. Yeah, and then we play eat some Spondylus uh, cuisine, mm. which uh, uh, is Spondylian fusilli. Yeah, and and Spankatopia, which is kind of spinachy bread <laughs> that the Spondylusians uh, enjoy. Yeah, and uh, we all said something that we loved about Grandpa. Yeah, um, I appreciated his uh, his love of history and the Jurassic period. And his robotics degree from MIT. Yeah. Um, yeah. This this intro is never going to end, is it? No, no. <laughs> I'm going to go for a little bit here. <laughs> I had another cousin who came up and said uh, the thing he thought about Grandpa was taking him on old fishing trips. Uh, <laughs> and old old fishing knees, trips? Old, old fishing trips with fishing chips, <laughs> skin and knees and spelling bees, dipping your line uh. in the water. And uh, come on, my sons and daughters, we'll build our houses of cinnamon <laughs> and uh, taste a, a cinnamon and aluminum. And my grandpa was the guy from the Decemberists. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> to see because you were you were running tight little circles off in a direction i could not no no could not i, I couldn't i couldn't either it was not um and then i knew i wasn't going to be able to i wasn't oh, like no, something no, like no. I, I surprised myself i did it was yeah. just like i looked down a road yeah and at the end <laughs> the road was full of broken glass and two, like two paths diverge by two paths diverge one of them was just the end of the scab when you start uh -huh. talking about cyber sources and the other one is this road that's on fire and has all this glass and stuff. And at the end of it is just like a big boiling puddle of diarrhea. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. like let's go for a swim. Soup's on, motherfucker. <laughs> soup's on. And ran down it. So <laughs> it's not my best work. No, it's fine. Um, no, no, it's fine. It was, yeah. I, you know, I, I, this, this is a post shame kind of show. <laughs> like, it is kind of. Yeah. yeah. It's very, it's very hard to think of being embarrassed about something on this show. Like, yeah. It's immune to, the, to your human, like to the people's petty human to, emotions to, like that. To your human notions of, huh, maybe that wasn't such a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> human notions of mediocrity. We are beyond. 
we have transcended. Uh, um, I'm Gary Butterfield. I'm Cole Ross. And this is Abject Suffering, the show where we play bad games. You don't have to. Yeah, and this week we are playing a game called Dino Wars, Destruction of Spondylus. Yeah, and if, you, if you've never heard of that, it's because it's kind of hard to get. It's vapor, vaporware, and you have to get it from a Dino Wares site <laughs> in order to, uh, to actually download it at this point. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yep, and uh, also this is uh, this is a recipient of the surplus Ys um, that mm. are out there. Um, again, we had that glut of the, le- the letter Y. Um, it's funny that you say that. It's because uh, this this publisher published those easy games, so they probably did have some surplus. Yeah, Ys. yeah. <laughs> you kind of roboted out there. You said ease games. I'm not going to edit it, but I like the idea that uh, there are nano machines censoring your speech. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks, I always thought it was pronounced ease, but I don't actually. Yeah, no, no. I, 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 I I've always, I, I've always heard it as ease, but it is a nonsense word. Yeah, it doesn't actually make that sense. Also, you don't attack; you just kind of chest bump enemies right, in, right. in a Night of the Roxbury esque fashion, <laughs> bringing it all over to that Night of the Museum joke at the beginning of the episode. Right. Um. Who? Yeah. How? How? Why are we playing this? What happened? <laughs> what, what went wrong? <laughs> yeah. What? What did? Uh, is this a random? Is this a uh, demand? Okay. What so this is the, this is a demand. Uh, this is from our friend uh, who we met and had uh, Vietnamese with, uh, Omgamus. Oh, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how's it going, Omgamus? N- yeah. And uh, strangely enough, uh, nobody else uh, submitted this. So this is a solely Omgamus joint uh, who paid for the privilege duckv.tv slash patreon um and uh what ongamu says about this is dinosaurs and robots in space what could go wrong i mean not not maybe not as much as you think like i don't right. think this is like this is not good no but this, we've done way worse like we, we've done we've done way worse even in this kind of like weird hybrid genre like yeah you know air fortress was a much earlier game than this but like this is more entertaining than that <laughs> yeah yeah i mean this is this is extremely entertaining <laughs> like if you, you just like uh dude, this game has a tagline yep <laughs> i made a note of this and the tagline is cybrosaurus must be unleashed the dino wars have begin or must begin <laughs> yeah, i like how, have begin. Is that? yeah have <laughs> begin. the, the, the cyborosaurus um yeah. they, they, they cannot get the uh spelling consistent um yeah but uh but yes the cybersaurus must must be unleashed the dino wars and when, when i made that joke about the about the excessive wise unless you you know looked at the title of the episode before this you may not understand that like it is d-y-n-o-w-a-r-z like um, electricity like like a dynamo dynamo yeah and so what we are left with, what we are left to assume is that Bandai was trying to, I mean, this is an obvious ploy to like get a new line of uh, action figures out there, right? This feels like a cross media property, even but there's it's not, not. There is yeah. no, there, like Dino Wars do not exist elsewhere. No, the, the advanced communication company, like just <laughs> decided, like came up with all this stuff, whole cloth and just made it as a game. Yeah. <laughs> um, I ran into a review that thought it was supposed to be, um, got uh, some other some other dinosaur show at the same time uh-huh. but it doesn't seem like that at all to me no no it's a, it's a little like uh you know power rangers or what have you like he gets into a gigantic robot you know dinosaur it's like a regular guy who gets into a gigantic robot dinosaur and it's got a little bit of that transformer nonsense where there's like an alien planet where there are robots that are based on something that's like uniquely human right or right. uniquely or you know terran mm-hmm. um but it's uh it's kind of inspired in general like, I would watch this cartoon if it was a cartoon. Oh, yeah. Like, I w- or would have watched it. You know? <laughs> I would still be watching it. I would have it open in a window while we were yeah, I'd have the, it. Yeah, I'd have the, 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 the Shout Factory DVD set <laughs> in a place of honor I'd, upon a shelf. I'd be giving you a play-by-play on this, on this, yeah. on this bad boy, because, I don't know, aside from the kind of dumb subtitle in this, Dino Wars sounds like it could be a really, really good game. The 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 kind of dumb subtitle I think is really important. This destruction is spondylus <laughs> because spondylus doesn't doesn't sound cool. Yeah, it has um, pond right in it. You can't spell spondylus yeah. without pond. <laughs> the, the most <laughs> badass of all bodies of water. Bodies of water. <laughs> New creek ten. Um, <laughs> we uh, rev up your paddle boats. Swan time. Remember romantic. Yeah. <laughs> um on golden this... spondylus 
that, that's when the di- that's the extinction of the uh, oh, of course the ro- yeah. roborosaurus <laughs> yep. or a roborosaurus um yeah the uh but 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 why why is it important even though spondylus sounds dumb oh just because it it, it suggests that like dino wars could be anything right but then now that I know there's a spondylus involved, like now, <laughs> now I'm on board. I was, <laughs> I, 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 I had only like slid my fifty dollars across the table halfway, but still yeah. had my, you know, my hand pressed down on it. After I heard spondylus, that hand lifted right up. It's yours. Yeah. You, you sold yeah. me. Yeah, give me one of the uh, the few remaining copies, please, <laughs> Funko Land clerk, because I need, I need to find out what happened to spondylus. I think it just kind of like tells this like little story to it. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know if it was just called Di- Dino Wars. I feel like it could be like a multiplayer dinosaur game or like mm. or, or, know, or even more... worse, like a 16 bit or a bit uh, like Street Fighter knockoff. Like, hey, yeah, these are mechs fighting. It could have been way more generic, but destruction of Spondylus tells a story. It's like it's like the saddest, <laughs> the fewest number of words you could do to have a sad short story. Uh, destruction yep. of Spondylus never saved, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned that this is developed by Advanced Communication Company. If that sounds familiar, uh, that's ridiculous because it's the most generic <laughs> name ever for a thing. It doesn't sound like a game company. Uh, this mm. is the developer who did um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. And 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 again, published all those Ease games, though, which mm-hmm. is pretty weird. Yeah. Like, because uh, the Ease games are not considered garbage. Like, I've never found one I really liked, but they're well thought of, you know? So like you could you could be mistaken for thinking like oh it's the guys who did like man the guys who did Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde at ease <laughs> you know if you if you didn't have that kind of separation that we talked about kind of at length yeah yeah um they're they're a real weird game uh, game developer mm-hmm. like very few of their things came to the United States yeah most of um, it was um like NES RPGs based on anime stuff right yeah yeah yep. and then like Godzilla games from time to time yeah um, but. <laughs> they have they have one title Fushigi no Umi no Nadia, which is based on uh, an anime. I, I forget what it is. Uh, Nadia, the secret of blue water. Um, however, it begins with Fushigi, which makes me think, "Hey, cool, David Bowie juggling." Yeah, <laughs> in the water with Nadia. <laughs> like Dave, juggling oh. in the water with Nadia is that? Oh my god, Gary. That translates. They're made <laughs> juggling in the water with Nadia. Um, uh, they also developed um, a game for SNES that might end up having to be. One of my picks, if it's not already in the in the system, uh, Mecha Robot Golf. Hmm, that sounds very good. Yeah, have, was... you, have you played it? Do you know it, or is it just? No, I don't. Like I don't know it. I need to fire it up. I'm sure I have it in my uh, ROM collection, but um, yeah, I don't know. I love the idea of a 16 bit golf game where all the characters are robots. Well, the uh, I mean, I've, I've talked about this before, but like, I you know, we'll see because there's there's not that much to talk about. It. Um, I really feel like Super Baseball 2020 would be a good WAF 2.0. Oh, yeah. Like I love that game. Yeah, like that, that's I mean, it's my favorite. It's my favorite baseball game. Mm-hmm. Like and it's probably my favorite traditional sports game. And it's not like a good baseball game particularly. Mm-hmm. It's just cool because there's robots and there's like lots of weird little cost benefit analysis between like saving up your. It's got like this kind of RPG mode where you get resources as you go through the season and you can save up and buy, you know, really really powerful robot, uh, you know, players, but they break down. Oh yeah. Uh, or or human players that don't break down, but are like tend to be like a little bit worse. Hmm. So there's this weird like John Henry subtext <laughs> behind Super Baseball 2020. But Super Baseball 2020 is very fun, and the idea of doing that with golf is also appealing to me because you have to do something to sports to make it good, <laughs> right? <laughs> to make it interesting. Like yeah. you know, it can't just be like people at peak human performance like yeah. taking something the size of an egg and putting it in the size of a grapefruit from miles away. <laughs> you know, it, it has to be. Uh, you know, I need it to be. Robots yeah, or dinosaurs. Yeah, I need it. It can't hold my attention. I'm I'm part of the MTV generation, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Why would you play Tech Mobile when you have Mutant League football right there? Totally. Like, why? Well, there's like everything they add to Mutant League football is a benefit. Right. <laughs> right. Like, and and like everyone, you know, talks shit about the XFL, but like. <laughs> I was honestly like, okay. Oh wait, with... oh, wait Gary, are you going to go to bat for the XFL? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I just like it seemed like. You know, I, I watched a couple XFL games and I was like, you know, I get that this is stupid and it's so like, <laughs> you know, adrenal, you know, sports border, like, uh, you know, right. yeah. so, you know, like, like extreme. That, 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 if you thought the fourth down was slowing you down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I did have to admit, like, oh, this is more exciting than football. Well, yeah, <laughs> like this is this is more fun to watch and quicker pace than football. Yeah. 
I, you know, I think that might be where the Monday Night Football robots came from. Actually, I think <laughs> I think that after <laughs> after the RPGs XFL went under. The X- for the XF the XFL averse, the extended XF, XFL averse. Boy, yeah. that's not easy to say. Nope. Um, but yeah, I think those guys came out. And those things, you know, those robots are consistently the highlight of whatever I'm in a bar and football's on in the background. <laughs> of course. Like, you know, other than the food. Like yeah. I get to look up and just see some weird robot dancing for no reason. And it was like and and over like loud country music and people just staring at it. Like, <laughs> like it does feel like a you know a different universe to me. Yeah. Do you want to read my fan fiction where those robots and the Svedka robot fuck? <laughs> yep. And Ian, Aaron insurance watches <laughs> <laughs> from a vent and flicks of bean. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. He just, just, uh, just really thrashes those labes. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> gross. Yes. Um, so so I, I, I forget where we i can't walk us back gary uh dino wars is what we we're talking about oh dino wars okay um yeah so the, the 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 i could not get away from the air fortress comparison because this is a game where it has levels where you play as like a like a tiny little dude and then levels mm-hmm. where you play um you know as him in these vehicles like um, a big limp Godzilla, like, he, <laughs> yep, a, like significantly a, less powerful as the yeah. dinosaur to me. Yeah, a, a Godzilla who probably I think just gave a little bit too much blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah he needs an orange juice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the the, the Cyborosaurus. Yep, the Cyborosaurus needs an oatmeal raisin cookie stat. <laughs> <laughs> like, the um, so I, it's because there's no sense. There's nothing for scale. No. Which, which drives me nuts. Like you get these little transition things where you, your little professor mm-hmm. uh, gets inside the dinosaur thing. Oh, and those are kind of cool. You mean Professor Proteus? Yeah, Professor the, Proteus. The, the, the mastermind behind the design of the man-made spondylus solar system. It is. Yeah, it's amazing this is not a cross-media thing. Oh, yeah. Like it, 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 somebody should take this with run with, and run with it. Like I want <laughs> like a comics company to do it. Like what happened in the Spondyloverse if, like after this. Like oh, continue yeah. this in comic form. Um. <laughs> But the uh, once you actually get into the dinosaur, like everything actually seems smaller. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's like we're a bunch of muck dwellers <laughs> doing the, uh, you know, as, as opposed to, you know, this gigantic dinosaur because there's nothing for scale. It's a real bummer. Right, right. Uh, it would have been cool to have like buildings on the ground you were smashing as this happened. Yeah. Give me some of that rampage heat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No. Although the the buildings in rampage were substantially bigger. <laughs> Yeah, the building. Yeah, the buildings yeah. were were huge. You were pretty small on rampage. Yeah, you were just like, like a little guy, like twenty feet tall, as opposed to like <laughs> you know a King Kong sized. Yeah. Guy. Um. The yeah, but but the uh, 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 and the weapons feel way worse. Yes. When you're in the Cyborosaurus. Well, here's the thing: when you start out at spread gun, everything is going to feel shittier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when you're a dude, you have this. You, know, you have the spread gun, and you get upgrades that let you have more uh, projectiles on on the screen at the same time. Right. But you're shooting. <laughs> you're shooting the spread gun, which is, as we've talked about at length, the most empowering kind of thing you can have in a in a two D shooter like this. Yeah. As the as as the robot, you start out um, with just a punch, and you pick up these just these weapons that have like less reach and mobility than even the most specialized Castlevania. Not even just reach and mobility. Also, just kind of like you shoot the the better one is the fireball. Yeah. Um, so the issue it's with like them is tiny one, little. It's just you shoot one. It's pixel. so small. <laughs> like it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't actually affect things that's that small because nothing has the mobility to dodge it. Right. You know. But it just looks bad. Mm-hmm. Like it just makes it. It just makes it, like that's a fireball that came out of your mouth. It's like the equivalent of like you. You know, size wise, like you or me spitting out a peanut, <laughs> and that's our fireball. Like a tiny little ball of fire, like that big. Yeah. You know, just like the mat, like a match head, less than a match head. And then that fist, that robo fist thing that you get that like, the problem is you can only have one of them on the screen at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes it, it's, it's makes it way harder to fight. Like yeah. getting upgrades as the dinosaur are always downgrades almost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was really frustrated by the mortar thing. So the, the bomb yeah. or whatever it was that just fired in that arc. Um, yeah. because I would miss on, I, I would miss one of the smaller dinosaurs and then you can't, you could not run to get him in an effective range. So now I'm fucked because anything yep. next to me can just attack me if I don't jump over them. Yeah. And yeah. they give you that right before the boss and it's not particularly good for that boss. No, no. Because that boss kind of rushes you down to get under your arc. Mm-hmm. It's like a real kind of like, fuck you move. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like, um, and the, and the second boss, which is a pterodactyl or pterodon or whatever, um, don't at me. Um, it, uh, uh, that gives you the, like the, like the power fist in front of that when the mortar would have been infinitely more effective to hit something flying. 
Yeah. 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 Cause it stays up for most of the time. It moves like way too quick. Yeah. Like, you know, I said this wasn't the worst thing in the world. Like, it's not a particularly good game. No, no. You know? It just, it, it has that, 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 uh, that, that Air Fortress problem of feeling very empty. Yeah. You know, like there's yeah. just not as much going on. There's no real, there's no real platforming. No platforming except yeah. for when you're a man. Yeah. And the man sections are significantly better. I yes. think like, yeah. they're much more successful. You have a weird kind of very vertical jump. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of weird platform detection, but it's not terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the 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 levels that I played were really samey. Um, yeah. But uh, but they were difficult, right? Um, mm-hmm. there, like there was an idea in there that I was actually annoyed by at first, but then saw some uh, some possibility. Your jump has a wind up. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You you can you kind of take a knee a little bit, like you crouch down before you jump. Yeah. So it was yeah. difficult in some of the timing puzzles, but like, oh, you know, a non-standard jump can be okay. It doesn't just have yeah. to be like, you know, firing up at a 45 like your uh, Mario. Yeah. Yeah. It's um the weird. It is very. I watched um most of a long play of this and it is very repetitive. Like not only are the areas you go in as the man the same over and over, but you fight the same bosses as the dinosaur and as the man. Hmm. So the man always fights this Metroid esque like virus in a glass tube. Yeah. With yeah. turrets around it. And the dinosaur goes back and forth between like rushy boy um that uh pterodon or pterodactyl uh don't act cool and then the uh <laughs> and then the um and i think there's one other one like a big triceratops or something but there there weren't very you they repeated mm-hmm. so it's like there's just not enough game here you know but yeah. i think that what's here like you could have done a cool game with this conceit yeah um and that's the thing that like is so cool about blaster master is it actually like fucked around with scale yeah yeah you know like where like you'd get out of your car and like oh you're tiny mm-hmm you know, you're tiny and you like you can't fall very far and you have like, you know, you actually felt disempowered yeah, in a way exposed. like exposed. Yes. Very exposed, like in the side scrolling section specifically. And then when you are in the overhead sections, which like are not as, you know, like widely considered to be not as good and as are not as good. Mm-hmm. Um, even though, you know, I found like some fun in those like. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, way, everything they're, is they're, size. They're way better know? in uh, Blaster Master Zero. Oh, I, I believe it. Yeah, I bought that, but I haven't started playing it yeah, yet. That's very good. Um, the. Uh, so everything is like kind of your size. Everything's built to your scale. So like it actually plays with that, that issue of scale really well, Mm -hmm. or this just kind of doesn't capitalize on that really. No, you know, because the, the dinosaur levels are so empty and even like, there's like a, you go into doors in the dinosaur level and they're, they're dinosaur size. (laughs) Like just the dino dino doors with a Z. (laughs) Yeah. The the, the, three eyes, Mm -hmm. place them where you like the, um, yeah, it is. Uh, so that's a real failure of uh the on this destruction of yeah, spawnless yeah. yeah it's like it's a video game like it you're not beholden to reality uh all it all it takes is a little bit of effort yeah well it, the the, expre- the specifically frustrating thing is that you get out of the dinosaur head to go in mm-hmm. uh to the thing so the door doesn't need to be dinosaur sized nope like you get over you get out of the, the fucking dinosaur yeah um if you if, <laughs> get out of the fucking dinosaur just just get out of the goddamn dinosaur you piece of shit no <laughs> when, when, when you die did you ever die as a dinosaur uh no i've never died as a dinosaur <laughs> in, in, in several past lives i did uh it was a br- yeah. <laughs> it was a brutal time and fade to prophecy and we're back. Okay. Uh, no, if you, <laughs> when you die as the dinosaur, which I, which I did when I realized I was stuck with a bad, either, either no health or a bad weapon for the pterodactyl fight slash mm-hmm. pterodon fight. I was like, well, nope. And then I just let my guy die to see the death animation. Cause sometimes that's funny. Your little dude flies out of the head. Like, he's just like, oh, a, yeah. like, like a, like a little big headed mm-hmm. blue, blue dude. Like, <laughs> I, I would have liked to have seen that, but yeah. Oh, that's, um, it's a bummer that I didn't get, I, I didn't get to, to die in this. I, end up stopping playing um and uh, you know there's some some shame to this because i the, the solution is actually pretty obvious but it doesn't initially seem like it but you go into so it's very linear like you you do a man stage and you do a dino stage and you do a man stage you get to the, the boss at the end there and uh after you beat him you have to backtrack back to your dinosaur yeah that's the i, I got stuck on that too i thought that i would like run through the gap that was created when i killed the metroid in the tank me too and I was like, oh, did something glitch out? And I didn't actually kill it. Mm-hmm. You know, because there's nothing to really imply that this has any backtracking or or elements to it. Right, right. You know, but it, but it does. You go back and get in the dinosaur, and then an unforeseen lift takes you to the next stage. Right. So, um, yeah, hard to say I hate it. Like, it's yeah. if I had this as a kid, I would have played it to completion probably. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, just because it's like it's not so atrocious and it's cool enough. Mm-hmm. You know, and the music's not that bad either. 
No, like it's... it kind of gets going when you when you uh, start the title screen. Like mm-hmm. it kind of gets you pumped. Yeah, I think aside from the emptiness and the sameness, another big bummer in in the game is the fact that you only have one life. So like, yeah. if if you fall into the pit as a dude, guess what? You have a you have a password. So like. I don't know if I had this if I would have played it because I like to do a continue. I'd have to enter the same password over and over again to get back to that same stage. The um the the password at least starts you if you just hit uh yes on the password, it doesn't start you at the beginning of that stage. Though I don't think. Oh, I think I started at the beginning of the man stage because hmm. I thought maybe I had to go down into the pit after I killed the the Metroid tank or whatever. Yes, yeah. Um, and you and you don't. Um, the uh so. Yeah. Um, there's not an awful lot of good stuff on game facts for this. There's an incredibly kind of like straightforward and short uh, fact, which includes like some verbiage saying, hey, like it doesn't make any sense to like tell you jump here, jump here. I'm just going to give you the broad strokes, which is valuable um, after yeah. after just this glut of facts that we've had, which are like, and then you jump right. Lol, here's my story about jumping right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it does. Uh, you know, and it recaps the story in a, in a way that's appreciated. Yeah. You know, because the story is really, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is a uh, a review on Game Facts. Is it by um, Dralian? Yeah, Dralian's review. Which, <laughs> if if this had been, if this was the first episode of Abject Suffering, then this would be definitely noteworthy. But this is such a type. Yeah, this is seen over and over and over. Like this is a sixth grader writing this as though as though it's an essay. Ah, yeah. now here's an interesting game that takes uh, dinosaurs and turns them with, into uh, cyborg like, dinos. Like, <laughs> like take a dictation. Yep. And then let me go through my, my collection of ROMs and comment on them. <laughs> ah. Ah, yes. Now here is a here is a wonderful specimen. <laughs> like writing out ah. I'm gonna start like appending ah to like everything I say. <laughs> ah. Well, <laughs> however, does a simple cyborg dino story get the job done? Let's see in this review. Review. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, you know, and then it's, but then it's just like kind of a review. Right, right. You know, the beginning of it is is pretty, pretty ridiculous. I know that the end uh, from the review is how I learned that the end Proteus fights a character named Brainius. Oh, yeah. That's his rival. Uh, it's a- <laughs> yeah. I like, I like that there's Proteus and Brainius quite a bit. <laughs> Um, I just found this. I haven't got a chance to vet it because I was, it happened while we were recording. Okay. There is a review of this on IMDb. What? Um, yeah. So maybe we need to like we need to expand our general searching huh. uh, for things. There's an IMDb uh, entry and uh, Big Man, aka Willie Six AJ, at, at, at a college in two, 2006 uh, wrote this as the greatest video game of all time. Uh, gave it a 10, 10 stars. Um, let me skim it real quick and see if it is. No, it seems legit. Like, it seems like he just really, really likes the game. <laughs> um, the, uh, so yeah. Um, I did a search for Dino Wars destruction of Spondylus, uh, fan fiction. Seeing oh, yeah? as if somebody had taken it upon themselves to, uh, stand on Spandalus. Yeah. To, oh. <laughs> um, and, uh, review the coolest game I've ever played. <laughs> So it is just a, uh, yeah, it is it, like, it's, it's on a forum that has its own sub forum dedicated to Dino Wars with a whole bunch of sub forums within that. And only one post review coolest game I've ever played. <laughs> it, is, it is pretty cool. Did, did you come across the flying omelet review? No. So some, some kid uh, has a blog here, a uh, flying omelet adventure blog or adventure log, which is a very like old timey looking website. Um, still very active. Uh, his last update was in February um, of this year, and uh, and he reviewed it. And it's a, it's worth looking at just because it is such a weird blast from the past. Okay. Um, like so, put in flyingomelet dot com and check out this guy's website. Look at these fonts. Whew. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like just like you know. Uh, Charizard as his little icon for each. <laughs> you know, like everything is kind of like center aligned in a big gray box, you know, with white text. Um, but he reviewed it. Hmm. And uh his review does this thing like there's like tiny, tiny postage stamp screenshots in the middle with text <laughs> that spans the entire screen between them. I think it's really, really annoying. And he just yeah. he just doesn't like it. You know, there's nothing too too funny about the uh the review. Yeah. I mean, he's one of the few people. Who uh 
he did does uh has has seen the spondylus wars i guess is <laughs> yeah. point. he is one of the few yeah. who returned to tell the tale yes yeah you can tell this is a site of a certain era because it has shrines as a as a subheader yeah. yep because <laughs> kids i mean that's the thing that kids they don't really understand is how into shrines we were <laughs> like in the 90s yeah i was thinking about uh i know i've made this joke before but like how amazing is it in the future like let's say there are future archaeologists mm-hmm. and you can somebody could say i constructed my shrine to the dino wars using the power of angel fire <laughs> and like that will be a sentence that means something, you know, sounds so amazing and cool <laughs> and then see what it actually is, yeah. you know, at the end. Like it is, uh, uh, I was, I've been, I was looking at, um, the switched at birth section. Okay. Which is like his weird conspiracies and, uh, you know, maybe these characters are, are similar section. And at first I was like totally ready to just dunk on, on all of it. Cause it starts off like, you know, the first one I clicked on talked about super Mario land being a, a knockoff of Alex kid or like taking a stab at Alex kid because they both have the, the jumping Chinese vampires. Right. I was like, well, you know, that's just a cultural thing. You know, <laughs> Alex kid didn't have a, you know, he doesn't have like a stake, like stock in Chinese vampires, but there's some things about it that are like, actually seem kind of interesting. Like there's this weird, uh, captain and the game master character comparison between this weird Ralph Bakshi cartoon from the sixties. Uh huh. It seems kind of legit. Like, and I was like looking through some of these and some of them are kind of cool. And might be the kind of reading in bed that I do. And I was like, man, am I, am I like a fly? Do I need to PayPal this guy? Like, am I a flying omelet <laughs> guy now? I was really ready to just like really, really dislike this guy. He's got this really long section, just uh, Kelly and glitches. Okay. In games. This is super weird. <laughs> Ooh, Kingsfield. Hmm. Um, yeah. Like th- this guy is very strange. This is a very strange kid flying omelet. Yeah. I think. Huh. Yeah, I'm looking at the Switch to Birthday, and like some of it is just observations that everybody's made. Like, ooh, Titus from Final Fantasy X or Meg Ryan. Were they the same? Yeah. <laughs> I would like to thank Fenrir of Fenrir Sp- Sprite Domain for this one. I've totally grabbed stuff from Fenrir's Spider Sprite Domain. <laughs> his domain, which he constructed with the Geo City. Yes, his domain, his his own corner of the Geo City. And it's Geo City. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, and this whole section on midis and stuff. The weird, I mean, the thing that's noteworthy about this because you can find tons of this shit. Obviously, the thing that's noteworthy, that's noteworthy is that it's active as of like three months ago. Oh, of course. So that that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, and uh, has not been redesigned. He hasn't taken that over to uh, to Squarespace. Oh, cool. <laughs> take a look at his. Uh, oh, never mind. There's there's stuff on the left. I looked at his Hyperzone Shrine. Okay. And I did, I didn't see that it changed his. Uh, you know, his links on the left and just like one video off center to the right under the hyperzone logo. And it's like, it's a good shrine, um, but no, there's a very here. good shrine. Yeah. This is yeah. an extremely good shrine. Um, <laughs> I've been doing some, uh, I've been, I've been doing some just cursory researcher on our friend, uh, Dr- Dralian, um, mm. going back and looking at some of, some of their other reviews, uh, the review for DuckTales, um, ends with, but does a cane wielding du- duck get the job done in this platformer game? Platformer is two <laughs> words. Let's find out in this review. Uh, like, uh, ah, <laughs> <laughs> the eternal question. Um, back to the future. The only question is, does this game live up to the hype? That's what this here review for. <laughs> That's what this here review is for. Now let's do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's... a little hype up like every time he yeah you know? he's, he's got a he's got a template <laughs> um, <laughs> the question is does freddy live up to the hype of his own game well that's what this review is for <laughs> then there are elm street was developed by rare ltd and published by ljn ltd back in 1989 <laughs> now let's delve into this review <laughs> well let's dive in <laughs> welcome where where's welcome. <laughs> where's waldo <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's the only one that broke it i so i i was looking for more oz and the only one i found i opened up his review of ghoul school which is a game i had never heard about um and uh there are no oz in the in the uh body of it however the title of the, of the review is ah a school possessed by ghouls <laughs> <laughs> uh, a school 
Cool school. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. School possessed by ghoul. But does a school possessed by monsters put the viewers in a scare? Let's, Let's find, find out, out in this review. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy owns. I, like, I, I totally three sixty on this guy. Like I, yeah. I really like this guy. Yeah. It's pretty great. Uh, 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 <laughs> yes. Contributions. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> ooh, Final Fantasy 2. <laughs> let's, let's see here. Uh, the game has a great story, simple battle system, and a great character development that are stable in RPGs today. Now let's get to the breakdown of Final Fantasy 2. <laughs> yep. Now let's, let's do it. You can just start it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you don't have to prepare me. I've like, already clicked on the link. I came for the review. Yeah. You know, I came for your insight, man. Yeah, you're not writing a script for a fucking video. Like, <laughs> and even then, just get into the fucking review. <sighs> yeah. Man. <laughs> I, 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 could, I could do this all day because he's very prolific. The, the, uh, yeah, Dr- Dralian is a very prolific review writer. He's a good boy. Yeah. I like it. not snow dragon good, but good in general. No, no, I I, I like uh, I like consistency, you know. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that he's got this. Uh, he's got an aesthetic. Yeah, he's got a house style. Right. Um, he does indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's everything I have to say about Dino Wars. Yeah, I don't, I don't have that. Yeah, I had a, had a reasonable amount of fun playing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's fine. I think that the, it sounds very funny. I was disappointed when there wasn't like a comic or any, even a comic that came inside the cart. Like I was really yeah, expecting. Yeah. A little bit more lore. Yeah, I want to. You know? I want to learn more about this master apprentice relationship between Doctor Proteus and Doctor Brainius. Yeah, I, I need like a Vadi Vidya style <laughs> like, series on this. Prepare like, to Dino roar. Wars, prepare to cry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, um, thank you very much, Amgamus, or oh my god, a moose, which is yeah. what I think that it's supposed to be. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I said Amgamus as a joke uh, five years ago, and I've never stopped. So. Why would you stop a joke? Why would you, why would you ever stop making a joke? I mean, yeah. honestly, like, yeah. it's, you know, yeah. it's like throwing away a perfectly good toaster. You know, <laughs> you can still toast. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to, 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 stir, to, to interrupt on this off topic thing. I just switched over web browsers because we're, for people who are listening at home, we're recording the Knox episode. Uh, watch out for fireballs after this. And uh, that has my Knox links open. And uh, it also had a Twitter tab. I follow an account called Strange Animals, uh, which I recommend. Okay. And there's a very disturbing video of a red leech swallowing a gigantic blue worm uh, that is really, really unnerving, <laughs> like from like a sounding perspective. Oh, cool. Like, oh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> no, no, not. Uh, it kept going. It's not like, it's in like there. A, two minutes long. Yeah, it is. <laughs> It, I mean, it's really just like a le- like a wormception. Like it's just like right. a, a you know, one one wet slimy tube yeah. being inserted into another wet slimy tube. Yeah, and there's a, like, there's a bigger wet slimy tube behind them, and just goes all the way up. Yeah, until eventually it's it just my hog. <laughs> you know, <laughs> a, a, a feast fit for a king. It's a hog. <laughs> it's just a feast fit for a king is what I'm gonna start saying like prior to sex. Like, like ah fit for a king. Will this sumptuous milady in front of me satisfy my hog? Let's be out in this session. <laughs> Uh, I, I, it took me a long time to get on board with hog yeah, uh, as a thing, because I think it implies too much like bigness. It feels a little bit too much like this is my hog. Oh yeah. Cause it, because, uh, it's a motorcycle, right? Like, Oh, look at, l- l- listen to the pipes on that hog. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like consistently for my entire life, downplaying the size of my dick has worked out really well because <laughs> setting expectations. I, yeah. Like when I do it and then somebody sees it, they're like, Oh, it's just like a dick. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, like, I know. <laughs> I, just, I just don't want to, I don't want to talk about like, it's just normal you know, it's normal, normal you know, it's, dick. Yeah, but like, it's, the, it's but, the Mario of dicks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you choose which one you want. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anywho. Uh, um, if, uh, so, so thank you. Uh, oh my God, a moose. Um, if you like the show, what can they do? Cole? 
Well, uh, they can go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Um, if you back at $5 a month, you can get two extra episodes of this show per month. That is part of these changes that we have made to our Patreon. Uh, this is a very fun show to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we want to give you more of it. Yeah. People, people talk about it on their Monday commute. Yeah. Enjoying it. And this way, now you can have it on other days commutes because it's not like other days at work are good. <laughs> um, the, uh, Monday is the worst, but it's yeah. like we're all pretty shitty. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we, you know, we, you can do that. You can also uh, rate. And so the Patreon is huge, uh, as we mentioned. Um, you can also rate and review it on iTunes. Get more people to listen to it, Yeah. Um, which we want just because we want more people to hear it. But also mm-hmm. that eventually might lead to more people just choosing to support the network, which is good because it's how we pay rent and Mm -hmm. to travel to do live shows and stuff and you know if this show if you know if the network grows and everything there's a version of of the network that like we go to a live show of this at some point which i think Mm -hmm. would be really fun yeah um we're not there now because nobody would come because not as many people (laughs) listen to this but we want to get there and you can help out with range reviews and telling uh telling your friends yeah so um all of that is good stuff to do but keep coming back because uh we, we we love having you yeah absolutely um, and that's probably probably about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you guys very much for listening. And uh, until next time, who is Cybora Dog? Who, who is Spawn Dog? Spawn Dog? Yeah, Spawn yeah. Dog, yes. <laughs>